हेलो स्टूडेंट्स टुडे वी विल स्टडी अबाउट चैप्टर टू प्लांट स्ट्रक्चर एंड फंक्शन मॉड्यूल टू इन प्रीवियस मॉड्यूल वी स्टडीड अबाउट रूट एंड स्टेम इन दिस मॉड्यूल वी विल स्टडी अबाउट लीफ फ्लावर एंड फ्रूट चिड़न दो लीव ऑफ डिफरेंट प्लांट्स are different they have some common features okay like leaf base let us see what is leaf base the portion of the leaf attached to the stem is called leaf base again i repeat the portion of the leaf attached to the stem is called leaf base next is stipule small leaf like structures may be present near the leaf base which are called stipules again i repeat small leaf like structures okay present near the leaf base are called stipules next is petiole leaves of some plants have a stalk called a petiole next is leaf blade the broad spread out part of the leaf is called leaf blade again i repeat the broad spread out part of the leaf is called leaf blade and its edge is called leaf margin okay next is leaf apex the tip of the leaf is called leaf apex next is midway mid vein is a main or central vein of the leaf okay children as it is in the center it is called as a mid vein and next is vein vein provides support for the leaf okay now let us see the types of leaves leaves are of two types simple leaves and compound leaves let us see what do they mean leaves of some plants have a single undivided leaf blade and a single midrib such leaves are called simple leaves again i repeat leaves of some plants have a single undivided leaf blade and single midrib they are known as simple leaves let us see the examples leaves of guava leaves of mango and leaves of eucalyptus are the examples of simple leaves okay let us see compound leaves the leaf blade of leaves in some plants is divided into many small parts called leaflets such leaves are called compound leaves okay children let us See again the leaf blade of leaves in some plants is divided into many small parts called leaflets small small leaves as you can see here example of shame plant which is also called as a mimosa plant or touch me not okay small small parts called leaflets okay these are called as a compound leaves let us see more examples leaves of neem leaves of coriander are the examples of compound leaves now let us differentiate between the simple leaves and compound leaves the leaf in which the leaf blade or lamina is undivided into lobes is called simple leaf and the arrangement of such leaves are in acropetal succession what do i mean by acropetal succession acropetal succession means new or young leaves will be on the top and old leaves will be at bottom again i repeat acropetal succession means new or young leaves will be on the top and old leaves will be at the bottom and what are compound leaves the leaf which properly show the division of leaf blade or lamina into leaflets is called compound leaves and here children these leaves do not 
make acropetal succession okay arrangement of the leaf lets next simple leaves have single blades and here compound leaves have smaller and separate leaf blades called leaf lets the base of the leaf contains stipules and here the stipules are found at the base of the leaf but other additional structures are absent so these are the differences between simple leaves and compound leaves now let us move to the next part of our module that is flower children flowers are very very pretty yes or no flowers are the most beautiful and prettiest part of any plant they are colorful attractive and when you look at them you become happy we feel happy whenever we look at the flowers okay children flowers are the reproductive part of the plant okay they are not only involved in reproduction but also a source of plant for food for other living organisms okay they are the rich source of nectar okay flower is very very important because from flower we get new plants okay now children let us see the parts of the flower children if you see this flower this green part like a stem it is called as a pedicel and this white part which is within or inside the flower is called as a ovary next is sepal this leaf like structures okay this is corolla this is petals these are filament this is style and these are stigma and these are anther so these are the parts of flower we will see one by one what are the functions of these okay now children if you see here the flower is shown to you a flower is made up of four concentric whorls the calyx the corolla the androecium and the gynoecium the calyx is the outermost whorl and is made up of leaf like structures called sepals the next floral whorl the corolla is made up of familiar colorful delicate structures called petals okay in this layer that attracts insects okay next the plant male reproductive part is androecium which is comprised of stamen e stamen is a thin long filament on which the anthers are present these anthers contain pollen as they mature they split open and release pollen grains next is gynoecium is a flower female reproductive organ this organ contains swollen ovary at the base a long tubular structure known as style and sticky tip called stigma okay these were the parts of the flower children let us move to the vegetative parts of the flower what do you mean by vegetative parts children vegetative parts of the flower means those parts which are not involved in reproduction okay first is petals these are bright colored part that attract insects bees color of petals varies from plant to plant some are bright while some are pale colored okay next is sepal sepal is a green color part as we saw now beneath the petals to protect rising birds next is pedicel flowers may have a long or a short stalk called pedicel let us see the reproductive parts of the flower which we just saw now in the video ovary 
it's a ductless reproductive gland that holds a lot of ovules it is a part of the plant where seed formation take place next is style it is a long tube like slender stalk that connects stigma and the ovary stigma it is a topmost part or receptive tip of the carpel in the gynoecium of the flower anther is a yellowish sac like structure involved in producing and storing the pollen filament is a slender thread like object which functions by supporting the anther okay children next is calyx in a bud condition the petals are covered by leaf like parts are called sepals which are green in color they form the calyx okay corolla this is made up of colorful parts called petals you observe the shape color and smell of the corolla of various flowers like rose hibiscus or any of the flower which you like can observe their petals okay next is androecium this is a male reproductive part of the flower it consists of stamen each stamen is made up of anther and filament again i repeat androecium is a male reproductive part of the flower okay it consists of stamens and each stamen is made up of anther and filament next is gynoecium this is a female reproductive part of the flower this is made up of carpels and the carpel consists of style stigma and ovary again i repeat gynoecium is a female reproductive part of the flower it is made up of carpels okay and a carpel consists of stigma style and ovary children let us move how the plants or the flowers reproduce in that first concept is what is pollination that is observe okay children pollination is a process by which pollen is transferred from the anther that is male part of to the stigma which is a female part of the plant thereby en enabling the fertilization and the production enter okay now let's see how pollination occur or how pollens reach stigma before that again i will tell what do you mean by pollination pollination is a process by which pollen is transferred from anther to stigma okay you can see this arrow okay these are being carried to the stigma okay and this process is called as a pollination let us see how do the pollens reach the stigma in that two types of pollination we will see children the transfer of pollen grains from stamen to the stigma of the same flower is known as self pollination okay the transfer of pollen grains from the stamen of one flower to the stigma of another plant within the same species is known as cross pollination in flowers such as beans and tomato pollination usually does not require pollinators or agents of pollination okay cross pollination on the other hand require pollinators such as honey bee when these little pollinators land on the sunflower to gather nectar it lacks will be dusted with pollen grains as the bee travels to the another flower it will leave behind some of the pollen when it stops and this will be collected by the stigma eventually the male pollen will unite with female ovule during fertilization and the ovule will become the seed besides insects 
wind, water and other animals such as bats also help in cross pollination. So these were the types of pollination. Again I repeat the transfer of pollen grains from stem end to the stigma of the same flower is called self pollination. And the transfer of pollen grains from the stem end of one flower to the stigma of another plant within the same species is called cross pollination. Okay children. Now let us see the next part of our module that is fruits. Fruits are juicy, pulpy, colored, aromatic structure that encloses seeds. Okay, we see different fruits and many of the seeds are there. Sometimes one seed is there, sometimes many seeds are there which are enclosed within them. It develops from a ripe ovary. They are rich source of vitamins, minerals and fibers. Children will like many of the fruits like grapes, banana, papaya, watermelon. Many fruits are there. Okay. They are the main source of balanced diet. Children as we have, are watching about the fruit or we have studied about the fruits. Now let us see. Or let us talk about their seed. Children, seeds which get divided into two equal parts are called dicotyledonous seeds. Okay children, see here. The seed is divided into two parts. Okay. Very easily it can be divided. Okay. Examples are bean. Okay. These are called as a dicotyledonous seed seed and seeds which do not divide into two equal parts are called monocotyledonous seed they cannot divide okay if you take one wheat in hand and soak it in water try to break it it cannot be divided into two parts okay so wheat in is, wheat is an example of monocotyledonous seed let us have the summary of both the modules which we saw. Plants like other living organisms have different parts. Different parts of plants perform different functions. Okay. They have different functions. Their parts. One is root system and shoot system. Root is the underground part of the plant. Root fixes the plant in the soil. It also absorbs water minerals from the soil if you see here. Okay. Stem is a main part of the shoot system. The main function of the stem is to carry water and minerals to the leaves. Leaves prepare food for the plant. Leaves are generally green in color. Flower is the most beautiful part of the plant. It appears as a bird. The bird changes into the fully grown flower. Okay, and last is fruit. Fruit is formed from the flower. Fruit also protects the seed. So these were the parts of the plant we saw in both the modules. About leaves, stem, root, flower and fruit. Take a homework. First question, describe the vegetative parts of the flower. Second what are the reproductive parts of the flower? Next is what is the difference between monocot and dicot seed? Next is observe any of the flower whichever you like and describe its various parts. And last question draw a neat and labeled diagram of leaf. Thank you.